Assalamualaikum. Welcome to this video tutorial on Windows Phone 8 for students at King Faisal University and for others who want to learn app development in Windows Phone 8. This is part 3 in the series entitled My First Windows Phone 8 App. If you've just continued from our second tutorial, your Visual Studio 2012 is already open with our My First WP8 App. If not, follow these steps. In the Start panel, click Visual Studio 2012. Click New Project. Under Visual Search Sharp, select Windows Phone. Then select Windows Phone App Template. Create a directory or just simply type CWP8. And in the name, type My First WP8 App. Click OK. Click OK. At this point, whether you came directly from the second tutorial or not, we all have the same screen, hopefully. Let's open File Explorer and see if the files and directories in the Solution Explorer are identical to our File Explorer. Drive C, WP8, there's our, our project, and there's the Solution file, and then there's our folder. Now you can see that there's the Assets directory, correct? The resources directory, yeah. But the other directories here cannot be found here in Solution Explorer. Actually, there is an icon here to show all files. Now you can see that even those bin and object can already be seen in the Solution Explorer. Now let's try to adjust the sizes of our windows to give better width for our SAML editor pane. First, let's delete the comment that starts with local localization node from here up to there. Let's also delete this comment. Okay, now notice the first word grid on top. Click between the less than symbol and the letter G. Now we can see that the less than grid has been highlighted and another there less than slash grid. This signifies the beginning and the end of this markup statement. Looking at the visual designer, the guide markers on left, right, top, and bottom cover almost all of our page. Actually, it really is already the entire page. Going back to the SAML editor pane, you can see that there are these two raw definitions. One definition has an height of auto and the other one has an height of asterisk or star. Clicking before the letter S in the word stack panel shows us the same principle, the beginning and the ending for the stack panel markup statement. And if you go back to the visual designer, the bounds has been reduced to the words my application and page name, which are actually text blocks that are inside the stack panel. Notice also this grid dot row value, which is zero. Clicking before the letter G in the word grid below the stack panel shows us the same thing, but this time, grid.row is equal to 1. Therefore, the stack panel with grid.row 0 has been referenced to the first raw definition with height of auto. On the other hand, the grid below the stack panel with a row of 1 has been referenced to the raw definition with a height of asterisk or star. The stack panel has two text block controls but the grid doesn't have anything on it. The stack panel and the grid are both inside the first grid, which is also the whole page. Let's make some changes. Click the first text block in the stack panel. We will try to change the text value, and we can do it using the SAML editor pane or using the properties window. Let's try to use the properties window. In the properties window, you can see that the type is the text block. In the text property, change it to my first WP8 app and press enter key. You can notice that the changes have been done inside the SAML editor and also in the visual designer. Now let's try to change also the text property of the second text block using the properties window and let's change it to main page. Again, the same thing. The effect was seen 
in the SAML editor and also in the Visual Designer. Now click the grid for the content panel. Click Toolbox and Dock it. You can simply drag a text block onto our content panel. And then let's change the property of text to Welcome to KFU. Enter and you can see that it has been changed. That's it. Now let's try to run it using our emulator. The emulator in the toolbars above allows us to see what it will look like when our app is run in a Windows phone. Its default is WBGA 5112 MB. It will take a while for its first run. That's it. Congratulations. That is now our first application in Windows Phone 8. We can change the orientation by clicking this icon. But as you notice, it is not applying the landscape orientation. If you want to make some changes and run it again, I suggest that you don't close the emulator. Don't close it using this exit. I suggest that you just click the stop button there in Visual Studio 2012. Now let's try to drag a text box onto our Visual Designer. Now looking at the SAML editor, you can see that there are now two controls inside the content panel for the grid. Now let's go up to the SAML editor and click the first line that you see, the phone. For its properties, there is the supported orientation. Try to change it to portrait or landscape. Then run it again by clicking the emulator. Notice that it's faster than our first run since the emulator is already running. Now let's try the landscape orientation. It worked. Now let's click inside the text box. Now you can type anything inside the text box. Well, congratulations! We just finished creating our first Windows Phone 8 app. We will still need it for our next tutorial where we will run our app not in an emulator but in a real Windows Phone device. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Masalama.